Hi there, welcome back to the Playwright and TypeScript course. In this video, I will show you how to integrate our Playwright test into continuous integration using the GitHub Actions. So automating your test is fantastic, but it's even better when your tests run automatically on CI. So we will integrate our Playwright test with GitHub Action and we'll make sure that our tests are run after the code change. So let's move to our code and ensure that our application quality is always validated. So for this automation, let's actually use the Playwright demo application to make sure that our test is run on the real app. For this, we will need to create another file, which we call the workshop9.spec.ts. So as previously, we will do import the test and expect from our Playwright. Perfect. And now let's actually create the test, which we will call the automating automating form submission. And let's give it a tag, which will be the GitHub actions. And I will explain why we need this tag later. Page. And after that, we would go to the page.go to, and we would need, so the application we will need is pretty familiar to me as we already practiced some code examples with this page. So let's just copy it. We don't need the hash. And go to the demo. So let's actually build some uh, example test execution for this. As previously, we need to find out the selector. Let's get the selector as before via the placeholder. So we would go with the new const and create some new to do selector. And we would await for get by selector, get by placeholder, sorry. And actually not await, but page get by placeholder. Cool, and as before, the selector is what needs to be done. So, and after that, let's add some to-dos here. So we'll say the new to-do and fill with value John Doe. And then let's, let's as the user do, uh, just press enter, press enter and uh, after this let's add another one just copy from here and let's say jj and press enter again So let's actually so let's actually create another cons which will be the first to do. And that would have the page get by test ID. So as you remember the test IDs, each of the element have its own test ID, and for this one is to do title. So let's pick the to do title, but those elements actually have the the same test ID. So what we need to do is specify that we need a specific one. So it will be, it will be this, the first one, which means we have to put the zero here. And then actually, let's actually check this element. So the first to do will be get by row. And we want to get the checkbox. And of course, to check it. Perfect. Let's maybe also check the second one. Uh, for the second one, we need another constant variable. So let's call it second to do. And this would be much the same. But the difference will be is have the another end. So then we await for expect. And then we actually want our, let's start from the first one. 
to do and we want it to have class class completed so as you remember when we once we click the checkbox it's got the class of completed cool and for the second to do is we did not check it let's make sure that the second to do does not have a class completed right not not to have class completed right and we forgot about expect perfect now we have this test let's make sure that this actually work on our local machine first and then make sure that I did skip all the tests this should be skip and so let's move on as previously we would need the command of yarn playwright test project chromium and to be headed right let's make sure this work and check if there is no error here right open the page select the to do and we would sh we should expect some fail here because I still keep looking for some selectors that we might mispronounce so I believe that would be the title because it's still up and running let's actually check this right let's check the error so it's looking for to do title and getting the role checkbox so we could not find the element all right so far I see that we are actually getting where the we should get the to do item to be able to proceed with this not a title because actually inside those we have only one title so let's use the to to do item because it's obviously we will be asserting only titles all right mm. so that's why we was getting our error let's create another test for more visibility and then pass the test so this would be the uh, let's call it handling form form and also give it the GitHub action tag. This will return the page. Cool. And also let's put only here. All right. So as previously, we would love to go to the page. And then we actually want to uh, to fill the page. Let's actually do the different way within the fill uh, method, right? page fill and as you remember we have to first pass the selector and then the value so let's get it as a placeholder so we will we were doing this so to get by placeholder we need actually to pass the placeholder and this need to be equal to this perfect and after it we need to give the value so let's put the John Right, so we fill the placeholder and then uh, let's actually press the enter so to make sure we're pressing enter in the right position let's take this locator again so we would love to give this locator here and right after we need to press enter so as you can see the playwright really allows you to change method uh, sorry chain method Cool. Then actually, let's check that. Mm, check that checkbox. But let's use the different selector. So, for example, this one. Let's actually took the class toggle. All right. So you go to the checkbox. Checkbox. 
and then await for page not locator. And put that toggle here with the class, of course. And after read, we can do the page dot checkbox. Oh, sorry, the checkbox. And actually check it. Cool. Let's make sure that both tests are actually working. Right. We have the test. The line reporter works just fine. Cool. So and also to properly work with the GitHub workflow. Uh, or GitHub Actions, we always need to uh, we always need the YAML file which is able to read by the GitHub or GitLab itself. So uh, the only difference it is they have their own structure and basically uh, their own syntax. So I already prepared some YAML file from the um, community, and this is basic basically um, duplicating the environment which we are using. Uh, you can put different in different environments here. You can use the different version of Node uh, and to actually pass the command you're needed. So as you can see, I also in here, I'm using the NPM for some difference and using the only Chromium and then using the GitHub action tag. That's why I mentioned it before, because once we mm, want to run the specific tag with, for our test, we need the grab command or just a, just a G. This allows you to tag your test and actually run them only when you need them. Also, there is the information that the reports will be stored here uh, for 30 days and the, the timeouts is actually take 60 minutes in cases your pipeline is blocked or something else. So let's actually push this code. We need to do, add the files, commit, m, and we'll add some workshop 9 and also the uh, workflows. Let's push it to the GitHub. All right, cool. So we can see that instantly suggested me some repo. Let's go by this link. As you know, I'm already logged in here. Uh, let's pick this link. So we can see that all our changes is actually also landed here on a GitHub. And let's go to this action, action page. So as you might see that there is, so as you might see that there is some fails as for now, let's actually check why it's not working. So the, mm, the action page showing you actually a lot of information about the job which was run. So as you can see, we did set up the job set up the node. So the command actually telling us that uh, we need to use the package log. As you remember before, we did use yarn. So in this case, let's switch back to the uh, NPM. So for this, we would need to delete the yarn log file, right? And run the NPM I command. So this was automatically update the node modules and uh, install the package log. So let's also push this package log to the GitHub and call it at first let's do the git at and then we will do the commit message of at package log. Perfect. And push it to the GitLab, uh, GitHub, sorry. Cool. Let's make sure that the test was actually the the pipeline was actually started. So you can see that your you can check all the steps via this this browser window, and you can see that it's automatically installing all the Playwright browsers and all the dependencies, and showing your the progress of this. As you remember. We do expect it to first install the dependencies, then install the browsers, and after it, actually run our tests. Let's see how it's going, actually. This could take quite quite some time. So what I wanted to show you also, that you can see that there actually the scheduled uh, cron here. Why did I comment and why did I comment here? Because I wanted to show you that it's actually possible 
to run your test daily. So you might want to uh, actually um, to run your test on daily basis or on weekly basis to just make sure that uh, nothing was broken with your application. So the GitHub actually proposing you a solution. There is a different one on different platform like GitLab CI or Jenkins, but this is the way how you can schedule your test working uh, on daily basics. So as you can see, the cron syntax is much is really simple. There is a lot of tools on the internet which we can use, you can use to set up your cron. All right, let's actually see why this failed on our test. So, so as you can see, once we did we did this in the setting before, uh, the playwright actually telling us that only is not allowed. So the test result, the test actually wasn't run. Let's change this. Let's delete the only and push it once again. And call it delete only. But let's of course add the file. All right. So the another useful thing thing here that you will know actually on what commit your test was run. This is also configurable. Once you don't want your test to be run on every commit, you can also configure this. So as previously, it's installing browsers. Now we're running our test. And you can see that the run was really fast. So let's move it. Let's open it again. And this is highlighted that our test was actually passed. So now we have completed completed job. So this is how it looks like from the action flow perspective. So now we're done with automating our continuous integration. There is a lot of more which could be covered, but we cover some basics. And uh, as you start to automate your test, depending from your company or uh, the platform you will using. So there is different approaches where to keep your test results or um, which reporter to use. In the next video, we will actually talk more about how to troubleshoot real issues. See you in the next one.